Hello to all Thistle fans, I'm delighted today to be joined by Donald McClymont who earlier this year with Stuart Smith and Mark Tyndall invested £500,000 into Partick Thistle Football Club. Donald, welcome back to Fur Hill, welcome home. Um, what have you been up to in your return so far? Well, um, thanks very much for having me, thanks for your time. Um, so I just finished lunch uh, with Chris Doolan at Jack and Ellie's. Uh, he had a spicy chicken burger and I had lentil soup. <laughs> Fantastic. And who picked up the tab? Yeah, well, he did. Even though I tried to pay, he wouldn't let me. So I told him when he comes to California, you can stay at my house and I'll pay. <laughs> Brilliant. What a perfect place to go. Um, and we didn't, we didn't see Owen Coyle either. No, not spotted on Fur Hill Road <laughs> or, or uh, Garskew or Mary Hill Road for that matter. So um, moving on to the matter in hand, I thought it would be helpful for you and for Thistle fans to hear a little bit more about you both as your background as a Thistle fan, first of all, and mm. then a little bit about your sort of credentials as a, a, a businessman as well. Sounds good. Yeah, so um, I came down to Glasgow to go to university in 1986. Um, started going to see Thistle shortly after that. Uh, I was kind of a, a casual football fan at best at that point. Uh, went to see them in the 88-89 season. My first game was a 1-1 draw against Clyde Bank. Um, one of Billy Lamont's last game before Lambie took over. Um, we went 1-0 up, Jerry McCoy scored. I think it might have been Owen Coyle that scored against us actually to equalise, yeah. or maybe um, Ken Eady probably, one of the two, a bit fair chance. Yep. And then we got a penalty in the last minute when I was walking around out of the stand and John Mitchell skied it over the bar. And at that point I knew that was the team for me. <laughs> Yeah, from, and from, from my background, um, so I'm an engineer by training, uh, left Scotland in 94, uh, worked in Central Europe for a while, uh, moved to the US, uh, founded a company with three friends uh, a few years back, uh, built it up from nothing in the semiconductor industry. We actually make uh, silicon chips that we sell into the automotive industry, managed to take the company public on the NASDAQ in the middle of 2021. And uh, in some senses, I guess that's what made this, uh, this investment possible for us. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, right, we'll touch on the the Thistle fan bit first of all. Mm. Um, you know that start of that Lambie era, mm. era, I guess, going through the nineties and, and loads of success. A pretty mm. good time to to grow up being a Thistle fan. It was, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure I really managed to grow up even yet, actually. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was it was a great time. Um, Chick Charlie was in his pomp. Um, we had a lot of good players come in and out of the club at that point. Still, m most of my favourite players from the history of the club are, are, are from that era, actually. If you if you ask me to pick my all-time 11, there's probably eight of them from about that period. Brilliant, brilliant. And I know you, you kind of regard yourself as a, a, as a Fur Hill Shed boy and you were over recently for the, the, the game at Hamden and although you watched uh, the first half from the, the, the posh seats, if you like, you, yep. you certainly made your way down towards the second section, so you were yeah. still a Shed boy at heart. Th that's right, I still feel more at home in there actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't like to wear a tie. So uh, I'm, I'm much happier down there with the boys. Great stuff. Um, going back to um, the announcement earlier uh, mm -hmm. this year of, of your investment alongside your, your, your colleagues, mm -hmm. um, I guess the simple question is what attracted you to invest at this point in time? Um, I mean, it was it just, it was possible for me, number one. Um, and, and this was my club. I mean, I have this rule in all sports is that you pick your team and then you die. You don't get to change. And so Thistle will always be my team. And um, I, I felt that um, it was possible for me. I think it was a good juncture for the club um, to maybe just kind of put a hand around its soldier shoulders and, and help a little bit, get us, get us to the next level and bring us back to, to where we belong. Um, my viewpoint on, on the investment is, um, I, I, I don't view this as a financial investment or somewhere where I'm seeking a return. It's, it's something for me which you know I view as giving back something to the club that has given so much to me over the years in pleasure and pain, as we all know. Um, and to that end, my, my goal in this is to make sure that I can maybe bring the business skills that I have to bear and to help the club. And, and really the, the, the viewpoint of putting the money in as an investment was just to afford me a seat at the table to, to try and help where I can, um, have resources that I can bring to bear and a bunch of friends who uh, are also uh, willing to help. So hopefully we can, we can do something good here as a team. Yeah, that would partly answer my next question about what yourself and, and Stuart and Mark can maybe bring collectively to and individually to, to Partick Thistle in, in addition to the, the monetary investment, if you yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, I mean we're, all, we're all experienced businessmen. Um, you know, we're, all, we're all older than we look. Um, I have more than 30 years experience in, in, in business. Mark does too. Stuart is a senior executive in the in European aspect of, of my corporation, actually, before he retired. So we have a lot of experience that we can bring to bear. I mean, we don't have sports experience, for sure. 
and you know we'll hope to to assemble a, a board which can bring that aspect of the of the the problem or the solution to the problem that we need to solve but certainly basic business is what we really want to drive i mean in this club if we can increase our commercial revenue by a relatively small amount we can increase our playing budget by a lot which gives a degree of certainty to the fact that that we can sustain ourselves in the Premier League and if we do go down we can have a budget that should automatically see us go back up and and I think um, fr from my background that's that's what I'll try to drive. Yeah absolutely spot on. Um, just finally on the, on the football front if you look mm. at this calendar year on the pitch you know I, I don't have the number off the top of my head but the wins per game ratio will be very very high there's been a lot of success on the pitch mm. coupled with that is the the noise and colour of the Thistle fans off the pitch and Fantastic, I suppose a yeah. message for them is that they can play a big part in uh, attracting investment such as yours to the club uh, in the way they portray themselves in the stands and the terraces. Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely um, I, I mean I have a friend that's, who's also involved in um, investment banking for football and he views the Scottish product as something that's in, uh, eminently saleable because uh, we have reasonable crowds as, uh, as opposed to certain other European leagues which are, are maybe less interesting for, for companies to invest in or to sponsor or to get their brand out there. You know, we have a good, we have a good brand. I mean, I, I live in Southern California. I get up every morning on, on Saturday morning and frequently I can watch Thistle on Paramount Plus. It's, it's available to the US audiences, which means that international brands can get their name out there by being part of Partick Thistle. So the colour of the fans, the spectacle that they make, the no noise that they make is, is all part of, the, part of the attraction of the club. And, and you know, frankly, Thistle's a community club. That's you know, the most important thing I think here that we build is a, is a club that is very rooted in the local community that we can bring through local boys through our own youth teams into the first team and you know bring bring the fans closer to the club and, and vice versa yeah and clearly we saw we've seen plenty of that recently and so yeah, more, and more of that on Saturday I mean, and, and I think um, the resurgence of that uh, has been very marked in the last six months or so I mean and I think the fans put their arms around the club also and and supported it when we needed it the most and that in transmitted to the players and the players produced on the field and that transmitted back to the fans so we've got to keep that positive feedback loop going yeah certainly do certainly do um finally we've talked a lot about the here and now in this season but what kind of longer term it, does success look like to you i mean i think um being a, a fixture in the premier league is is where we've got to get to um we've got to have ambition to play games in europe um, also drives revenue for the club um, which flows back into the playing budget which again has a, a positive feedback effect on our success so um, you know, getting the commercial revenue to the point where where that can begin to start the ball rolling and seed that process is extremely important to me and, and should be to the club and it is to the club. Um, and I think you know we have to be realistic. Probably we're going to develop players at some point. We're not going to stand in their way from going to bigger clubs. That may cause us to go down one league, but we've got to be in a position where that doesn't become. Um, death for us we have to be able to bounce back right away in one season like some of the teams that have come down around us maybe over the past five or ten years or so and as opposed to struggling going down another league which you know can be extremely catastrophic to to um to the club's financials and and to our to our future we, we got to get to that sustainability where you know we're like motherwell who haven't been relegated St. men who are now maybe back to being a fixture um why not us that's the bottom line i mean we're a similar sized club with a big catchment area, we should be able to make that happen. And, and I think, you know, really the return for me will be to, to get to, to see that happen. That's mm. that's the most important thing. Which which gives me a sense, and, and this will be the final question, that, you know, that you're not here for this season or next season. You're looking at this as a long-term journey together with the club, three, four, five, ten years, whatever it might take to achieve that, those sort of things. Of course. I mean, it's got to be a long-term view. I mean, this isn't the case of um, bringing some money into the club using it as a short-term fix to expand the playing budget, which isn't sustainable unless we can build revenue streams which are sustainable, either through being in the top league or commercial revenue streams. So we've we got to take the attitude that we're going to build an infrastructure, use the money to invest in, in areas which develop revenue streams for the club such that we do become sustainable. And this is something that you know I can walk away from and the club can stand on its own two feet at that point and I don't have to worry about it. Great stuff. And I'm a warrior. Well, the only thing you need to worry about now is your dinner date at the Woodside then, because that's the next stop. Thank you very much, Donald. Absolutely, let's go. Today. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll speak to you again soon. Cheers. Cheers.